Welcome to the TMMI video presentation for Prophecy Web Space install. Our objectives with this video are to make sure IIS is installed correctly. We've done that by enabling ASP.NET. Make sure the .NET 4.5 is installed. We're going to install all the latest Windows updates, especially the .NET updates. We're going to install WebSpace and we're going to make sure that the Prophecy Application Publishing Service is started before we uh, try to connect to any clients. <clears throat> we are assuming that a supported Windows OS and the latest Windows updates are installed, and you must be logged in with administrative rights to install successfully. The first thing we'll do is to go and make sure that we have all the latest Windows updates installed check for updates. We do currently have all updates installed and now we're going to go and enable IIS. This will of course require additional updates. So we'll head over to our roles for IIS. So I'll go to administrator tools and start up our server manager. Depending on what OS you're running, whether it's um, 2012, 2008, Windows 7, Windows 8, um, you'll find the roles in different locations. Um, but in general, they're under Server Manager and Roles. Hit Next, and I'm going to add the IIS server role. Hit Next. <clears throat> next again. That brings up our options for web server. Um, all these are default components when you select uh, IIS. One thing to make sure of in order for WebSpace to work is to select the ASP.NET. Once we select that, we'll click on Add Required Roles. That turns on some different options here. Then we'll click Next. This tells us what's going to be installed uh, and that the server may need to be restarted after we run this. So we'll go ahead and hit Next our install. All right. So it's like our installation succeeded. We'll hit close. It isn't asking me to restart the system, but I'm probably going to do a restart anyway. Anytime I install IIS, I always um, do a restart to make sure those components are happy. Um, before I restart, though, I may check for Windows updates again because uh, adding IIS components will often uh, add some uh, additional updates. So we did find some additional updates, uh, security updates for .NET, very common. So um, we're going to do those, and I'm going to add all the optional updates also. We'll complete the install of all the uh, updates and restart the machine and start from there. Once the updates have finished, we'll restart the PC. All right, and through Video Magic, we've installed our updates and restarted the PC. So now we'll go ahead and go with our web space install. Again, I have a shortcut on here, or uh, jump drive with WebSpace 471 on it. I'm going to unzip this to a folder on the local hard drive. All right. So from our local hard drive, our C drive, where that um, uncompressed those folders, we run the setup. We'll install Prophecy WebSpace from here. Next. Accept the license agreement. In general, we 
suggest installing in the uh, suggested default folders. Uh, this is a 64-bit app, so it will install in C colon program files, Proxy, Proxy web space. Uh, we can specify the administrator account uh, for IIS uh, application pool. If we leave it blank, blank it will use the uh, default system account. So I'm going to leave that one blank for now. And we'll click install. After the install is finished, it asks us to restart our computer. And we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've restarted. We've installed our updates. One of the first things we want to do is go ahead and launch the WebSpace Administrator. And we'll see if um, we have our WebSpace <clears throat> component started. I see that TMMI Server 3 has started. Um, the new version of WebSpace supports many platforms. <clears throat> One of those is iFix. If we look at the properties here, it tells us uh, the command line options it's going to run, what ed web SCU file it's going to start, uh, and the directories it's going to start in. So uh, everything is looking good here. Um, one thing to, to tell you, if you don't see a host listed here, part of your troubleshooting steps would be go to uh, the services of the computer and make sure that the prophecy application or prophecy web space service is running. So this guy right here, this is usually the component that gets stopped up uh, when there is a problem. So as long as this one has started, we have this component going, we'll, uh, we'll make a connection to, uh, to this. So I'll uh, join with another machine and we'll make a quick connection. All right. What we've gone is um, I've gone to uh, Internet Explorer, I've launched TMI-Server3, which is the name of my web space server, forward slash prophecy web space, forward slash ifix.html. This will take me to the ifix piece. The first thing it's going to do is pop up an option um, because this is going to, um, going to prompt for me to install an ActiveX component for the web space to work through. So I'm going to go ahead and support, um, support that installing it. And we'll click on install, and we'll see a prompt here, uh, prompting for the install. So I haven't I see this hasn't popped up in a timely fashion. So I'm going to go and do one other step. We're going to bring up the uh, tools here. Go to compatibility view settings. And we're going to add our server three, TMI server three, to that list. And I'm just going to refresh this and see how that works out. All right, and that did it for us. There are some things that need to be done inside of the web or inside of iFix itself. Um, iFix requires that security is turned on and that um, user accounts are Windows-based user accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. This shows me that the web space server will be working. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And we're just going to go through the steps really quickly here of uh, fixing, the, um, fixing the security inside of iFix. <coughs> Before you can change security inside of iFix, you have to have iFix running. It is one of the components inside of the system configuration where iFix must be running in order to make changes to it. So we'll go ahead and start iFix up. Once the workspace comes up here, I will launch the system configuration utility. All right, we'll go to applications, and we'll launch security. As I mentioned, it uses the um, Windows account. So we'll manage our Windows account here. And I'm just going to add one uh, new user account. Maybe I'll call it Web1. So we'll create that user called Web1. Under our configuration here, local users and groups, create a new user. We'll call them Web1. We'll give them a password of Web1. All right, so there's my user right there. And we're going to change this user and make them a member of the Remote Desktops Users Group. 
I might make them a power user also. So we'll do those. All right. So there's my user called Web1. Now I'm going to go into the iFix security. I'm going to add a new user. We're going to say use Windows security. The username is Web1, and it's a local domain, so I'm not going to put a domain in there. And we're just going to make them part of the group uh, supervisors just uh, temporarily. Can, we can lower those settings as we need to later on, and then I'll turn on security. So iFix security is now turned on. Um, you can see that it's not letting me into anything. So we'll have to go under here and do a login. I'll log in as Web1, just to make sure that user account is working. Oops, got to type the password incorrectly. All right, so now I should be able to get into everything. Um, oh, there we go. All right, uh, I'll browse, and I'm going to go and open up my web.scu file. So we'll open up our web.scu. This is the SCU file that clients connect to. So when we use WebSpace, the clients will use a web file called web.scu that is configured inside of the WebSpace administration. So inside the WebSpace administrator, under applications, we actually specify what SCU file will be used. So that's in the WebSpace administrator, under applications, under iFix, properties, and it shows what SCU file we'll be using. So in the SCU file, I need to give it a name. Maybe I'll give it web. One is the name, and we'll turn on networking, and we're going to talk to SCADA1. So I've configured my SCU file for my web, and I'll do a file save as, and we'll just go ahead and save it as web.scu. All right. So now we can go back to our browser establish a connection back to our WebSpace server, and we'll log in as Web1 and Web1. It is going to require two logins. Uh, we can disable that. Those, uh, you can look those settings up in another place, but uh, we'll just do our configuration here. So Web1 and Web1. And this should start up iFix for me, at least start up the workspace. I don't have any uh, default pictures configured, so it's going to prompt me and ask me what picture I want to uh, display. We'll do a chart group demo picture just for the fun of it. So um, this is our iFix system running an iFix picture. So that was a successful install of the web space. Uh, again, we had iFix 5.8 already installed on this machine that the web space is attaching to. We ran through the web space install. Of course, the key components to making this successful was having IIS installed, making sure the latest updates for Windows were done, and making sure the .NET component was selected when we enabled uh, the WebSpace server. Key takeaways for this uh, install of the WebSpace server, WebSpace uses many Microsoft components, um, so those components have to be in place. Key to a successful install requires that IIS is enabled properly. That includes making sure you've selected the uh, ASP.NET component. Microsoft updates are applied properly. Uh, make sure before enabling IIS and after enabling IIS, you run the Microsoft update and en enable all updates. Uh, .NET 4.5 must be installed and updated. Thank you for watching. Uh, for more information, contact us at tmmi.com and look for our uh, web face tips and tricks. Thank you.